Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? It is Thursday, and you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, and on my website at brushedbybrandy.com. And I am a Dixie Bell Paint Brand Ambassador, so I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. We paint together. So, you guys, tonight we are going to work on these huge nightstands behind me. They're huge. My husband, Sean, is here to answer any questions you might have, so pop on and ask any questions as we go. And otherwise, we will go, go ahead and get started. So, um, I want to show you guys tonight a little bit about how I'm getting these ready for paint and then we're going to put some paint on them. Let's talk about um, uh, the surface that I'm going to be painting these on. So it's a pretty glossy finish on here and I feel like um, a lot of people, you know, get intimidated by a glossy finish, but it's super easy, you guys. Um, these will need a scuff sanding. So I always start my pieces with a couple things. Take the hardware off first. Take your hardware off. That's always going to be your first step take your hardware off with the screwdriver, get it off there. So these are plain front, no hardware on them. Um, and the next thing you wanna do is clean your piece. Always take your hardware off, always clean. Those are steps you don't miss on anything. So we'll go ahead and give this a cleaning. This is Dixie Bell White Lightning, which is a granulated formula and you dissolve it into water. I dissolve mine into a spray bottle and then I can use it over and over and over and over again. Um, you can take an abrasive like a scotch pad. I'm going to just use um, some paper towels because these have already been cleaned one time. Um, and I'm just going to clean these off. I'm evaluating the, my pieces as I'm cleaning it. So I'm looking for things like, um, how is this cleaning? Is it likely to bleed? Am I getting tannins coming from my piece as I'm cleaning? Okay, this is not tannins. It's already, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't clean the front of this. I saved that for my life. It's just dirty. It's not bleeding. If it was bleeding, this would be a different kind of a brown, almost an orangey brown because it's oils from the wood. I'm looking at the age of my piece. These are fairly modern, probably made in the 90s. I guess that's not really modern anymore. <coughs> huh? The 90s is vintage yeah. now. Yeah. How sad is that? Um, but they're not super old. It's antique. <laughs> yeah, these are antiques <laughs> made in the 90s. <laughs> and then... Um, if I look at what my pieces are actually made of, they, they're they stained a dark wood, but look at the interior of these. I think that's called an antique wood. Yeah. <laughs> if, oh. if you look at the interior oh. of these, I can see on my drawer back and my drawer sides, these are actually a light colored wood, stained dark. So it's not a dark wood, it's a, it's a dark stain and there's a difference. Um, between a dark wood and a dark stain. So once the piece is cleaned, you need to rinse your cleaning residue. Um, cleaners leave a residue just like furniture polishes or, and that goes for any cleaner, no matter what you're cleaning with, you need to rinse your cleaning residue away from your piece. Otherwise your paint is going to attach to your cleaning residue instead of attaching to the actual surface of your piece. Okay, and I always recommend cleaning before you scuff sand because um, if you have furniture polishes or you know you don't know where this piece came from, you don't know how it was treated over the years, it could have been oiled with commercial oils, you can grind that stuff into your finish. So you wanna make sure you remove all that before you scuff sand so that you're not pushing it further and further into your finish. It's removed completely. And now let's talk about scuff sanding, okay? I'm gonna turn this piece actually onto its side so that I'm not, I'm trying to scuff sand a wet surface. So let's turn this a little bit and take a look at the side now. These are huge, did I mention that? Yeah, yeah, I moved them. Oh my gosh. Man. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this side. Once you've cleaned it, you've rinsed your cleaning residue, it's got this glossy finish on it. A lot of people like to use slick stick. That would be an option on a surface like this, if you want to. Some people just don't like scuff sanding, and that's that's okay. I don't have any problem with that at all. Um, so I feel like on these, it was either a choice if I wanted to use slick stick, but I would have had to apply it. Probably would take about an hour or so to apply it to both of these, 
plus I would want to give that 24 hours of dry time on my slick stick. So it does add time to my process. I'm going to be able to paint these tonight by doing this process. So when you're scuff sanding, I'm not trying to take it down to bare wood, okay? I don't want to see wood on this by the time I'm done. That means you're over sanding your piece. I'm going to use my sander, my surf prep sander. I just have a pad on here. This is a medium. And I chose the pad because I'm going to be able to get all these surfaces, these curves on my piece by just using my sander, my power sander. If I don't have a surf prep, I would use the power sander on these flat surfaces as much as I can. And then you just come back and get your um, flat surfaces. And I would just use one of the surf prep rad pads that are available on the Dixie Bell website. You can use one of the rad pads. So I'll show you both ways. Okay, so I'm going to take my sander. I don't have my vacuum turned on, so it's loud. So we're going to get dust, guys. Okay, that's all the scuff sanding is. It's, now, let yeah. me ask you a quick question. If you were not going to sand this and you cleaned it, you'd come back with some water. Yes, absolutely. After I after I sand it, I'm going to dust my piece. I'm going to take the dust off, but it's already cleaned. I know that I don't have oils on here. I'm just going to create dust, and I'm going to need to tack that back off once I'm done. But I prefer to I prefer to clean before I sand and then just come back and rinse my dust away. So can you guys see the difference between this top and the bottom now? I scuffed this, it turned it a little bit white. I didn't take it down to bare wood. That's not scuffing. I'm just taking the gloss down, okay? And then on curved surfaces like this, I can get in here with my pad. And ride my my curves pretty easily that's super easy you guys scuff sanding is super easy it would take i don't know 10 to 15 minutes versus the hour that i talked about that it would take to get um so what grit did you throw on there this is a uh, so surf prep has these are <clears throat> this is a medium pad i would say uh when you're scuffing you want to use anywhere from a 120 to a 220 grit i really evaluate what the finish is like on these it's a really thick clear coat i can tell it's a, it's a thicker finish on it if you've got a thinner finish, you can use a little bit finer grit of paper. I'm not trying to get through to the wood. So on here, I'm using a medium pad because I can tell this is a pretty thick finish. It doesn't have a lot of damage to it. This is also the time when I would look for little spots like I have a little ding right here. So while I'm scuffing, I give that a little bit of extra attention and I just make it level with my surface so that when I paint, I don't have a ding that's going to show through my paint there. Paint is not a filler, so I don't want to have to fill anything. That was just, that's just a little repair that I did there. That's repairing it and preparing my surface um, to get paint on it. So let me show you what I would do if I was scuff sanding. One second. All right, if I'm going to manually scuff sand, the Surf Prep Rad Pads come in a combo pack, and you get four different colors, and the colors are different grits. Um, you get two of each color. So I like the, either the blue or the red for my scuffing. Either the blue or the red that comes in the package. It also has yellow and a gray. The gray is too high of a grit. The yellow is too low of a grit, in my opinion. So I would take my Surf Prep Rad Pad, and this you can just ride in the crevices. And it's, I mean, that's just as easy. Because it's a flexible pad, so I can curve it around, you know, curvature like this. And I get the same result. You always want to scuff with your with your grain too. So I feel like we've started something here because there is the question of what happens to be in the wall behind the door. Oh, what's in the wall? Yeah. Is there something in the wall? No, there's not. But the that, question... Is that a horror movie? It sounds kind of creepy. Is there something in there? There's nothing in there. You don't think there is? No. Should we check? You guys want to check in what's in the wall? I mean, I'm game. We should put something different in here every time, huh? Yeah. I hope it's food. I, I always need food. something else to do. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Apparently he is in there, but... Well, we got to stick our hand in there. So I'm just gonna, about that. I'm just going to... Um, it's a little cobwebby in there. Oh, man. Oh, my God. He got his giant head launched oh. in there. You know what that's like. Hang on, he's got a little cobweb going on too. 
Poor Bob. Oh, man. You know what else? He has a little thing, and it's down in here. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get a childlike hand I... to go in there. Well, I'll get Sean to get it later. You guys, we have a guest star. Bob Ross has joined us for the evening. I didn't realize you were coming with jokes today. <laughs> Let me clean this I, again. His no, I thought like, it was the, the his, norm. His hair's a little cobwebby. All right, he's going to stay for inspiration, I think. I'm feeling inspired now. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, so you guys, once your piece is all scuff sanded, I, of course, want to make sure that I tack back off my dust, and I'm going to go through and just dust the piece. Now this is ready to accept paint. I've given a little bit of bite to my surface. I just deglossed it. I took the gloss away from the finish. And then I can skip the step of using slick stick, which if you prefer to do that, absolutely go for it. It's not gonna hurt anything, but a scuff sand is super functional too. Let's go over to the other one that I've already done. I know you just what? got cameras all in place and now I'm moving you around. Yeah, I'm just focused on Bob. I wanna see what Come a real here, painter looks like. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. What is that? Is that the Dixie Bell of uh. flat lard that he's got there? I need to paint this. It should be a brown handle. I think he's using a different brand of brushes, which makes me really unhappy. All right. So this piece, you can already see that I've taken my gloss down. I've got some marks in here. I didn't go down to the wood. This is a spot where I had a little... Um, a little nick so I just took that down so it's level with my surface had another one here so I made sure I sanded that out so I'm doing little little tiny repairs at the same time to get my surface ready for paint all right my color selection <laughs> I agree the afro that thing is it's a it's a magnet it's kind of large like you wonder how much of that is actually his head in there okay is it anatomically correct is that what you're trying to figure <laughs> out no, Bob's got like the low collar the low cut like a oh, he's got the like chain Saturday going. Night Fever yeah. shirt, yeah. yeah, and he's got a gold chain on. Yeah. Did he wear a gold huh? chain? Did wear a gold did chain? He? I think he did. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Um. So my piece is all ready for paint. So my color selection. So you guys, this is going to a. There's a bed and breakfast here in California, and it's really kind of cool. Like I'm super honored by it. Um. And the couple who's opening it, it's going to be a wedding venue too. Has a some of my pieces and they're decorating the bed and breakfast with different themed rooms with my pieces. Isn't that fun? Um, so this is going in there and our last bedroom set that we did for them was kind of in the blues. This one's going to be more neutrals, gray to the browns. So the colors that I chose is I'm going to use Dixie Belle drop cloth, which is kind of a warm cream. It's not a pure white, it's a warm cream. This is the most popular of the Dixie Belle white or cream colors. Um, she just says Betty's made in China. <laughs> is he? Oh, I feel guilty looking him over like this. I don't know. It's probably on his other piece, which is still inside the wall. Okay, so I'm going to use Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. It's going to be my first color. And then I've got French Linen, which is a grayish, warm gray. And then I'm going to use Coffee Bean as my dark. That's a really pretty color combination. I got out gravel road because I'm I wasn't sure if I want to go, but I think that might be too gray. So I so I got it out just in case, but I'm gonna start with my coffee bean. That's the way I'm leaning. And then I wanted to show you guys if you don't have the luxury of having all 69 of the Dixie Ball paint colors at your fingertips to be able to coordinate colors, we now have a fan deck. And it's all of the colors that are true to color in a fan deck and this is really helpful when you're choosing color combinations like this because i can look and see what coordinates together so this is my color combination in the fan deck and i can open this up and see what colors will look like together if i don't have all the containers at my disposal so this is really nice to have if you're an avid painter or trying to match something because you can hold it up and say do i like this you know what is what does it look like if I use buttercream instead? Um, so it gives you the option to play around with color combinations without having to have all 69 of the paint colors at your disposal. Let's paint. What? Let's paint. Okay, so I usually start with, when I want to do a blend and finish, the color that I want to kind of be my dominant color. And that, in this case, is French linen. 
that's going to be my main body color. And then I'm going to use the drop cloth as my highlight, which is a, a lighter color. And then the um, coffee bean is my low light, which is a darker color. Okay. And I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Mini to lay it on. I have a mini for each color. And then I have my oval medium, and I actually brought out an extra one. I always bring out extra brushes when I'm painting because I don't want to have to get up. It's really what it comes down to. And I'm going to start with my French linen. Now, I don't expect that this is going to cover on this coat here. Um, this is going to be my rough draft coat. And I'm going to kind of frame out my drawer in the French linen. But I'm going to leave myself room around the outer edges to put some of that coffee bean and work those together. Kind of a narrow space on these drawers. Let me get down here in this crevasse and up top. I'm painting with my drawers in. I will take them out and paint around my edges as well. But I want to make sure I get it nice and consistent. And then um, I also do this because the drawer is holding this for me so you guys can see it on camera. And you're not priming first. No, I don't need to. I did that scuff sand and that takes the place of it. These are solid wood. Slick stick is intended to paint on non-porous surfaces that are not made of wood. So glass, plastic, laminate, PVC, those are all man-made surfaces. This is actually real wood. This is real wood. It just has a glossy finish on it. So as long as I take that gloss down, I don't need to prime it. It takes that step away. But if you wanted to put slick stick on here and prime it, primer never hurts anything. It never does. It's only going to help you. So I say it's completely optional, but not, not necessary at all. All right, and then I'm going to come in here. This is my drop cloth, and I left myself a space in the center. And I'm just going to brush it now. right into, I just used a little bit of paint. I'm just going to brush it right into that French linen. Now, I don't want it to be, when I'm done with this, I don't want that drop cloth to look like a stripe in the center of my drawer. So I want to make sure I really feather this out and get it kind of nice and soft in the center. If you start losing your color, you can come back and give it a little bit more. And that's just going to bring it back to life. So if it starts getting too muddy because you've overbrushed, don't be scared of that. Another tip that helps, I want to make sure I get that going all the way from my hardware to my hardware, is you can brush it, give it a vertical brush stroke. Okay, and that kind of spreads it out. And then I can come back. In this case, I would use my neutral brush and I would just soften out that edge. <laughs> Sheila, is that my stomach growling? No, that's the stool that I'm on, the poor thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> comes with a warning it's, label it is it's like a scream of pain yeah, yeah it's a cry for help <laughs> <laughs> now if this was an oil-based piece would you go about it the same way yeah yeah this most most factory finishes are oil-based finishes it's, you know, you can safely assume that if it's a factory finish, it's an oil-based finish on there. Um, the same thing if you're using silk paint. You always want to make sure that you... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Have a conversation while you're doing that. <laughs> Just use this color, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. I got it. I always get them. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I would still take Dixie Bell paint containers any day of the week over uh, metal paint containers that get rust in your... The lids get beat up. Yeah, the lids get beat up. They don't ever seal properly and then you end up with rust inside your paint. I would take these any day of the week. All right, and then I'm keeping my, uh, this is coffee bean. But what's interesting about coffee bean, if you brush it out, you guys notice it almost looks like a gray so coffee bean is actually a pretty cool brown i don't just mean it's cool like like bob hey, cool yeah like the fonts yeah like bob's shirt and i just cool. dated myself and that's cool <laughs> <laughs> thanks for playing what's that brush you're using let's get back to business <laughs> yeah did anybody really ask that uh this is the dixie bell mini 
And then I'm going to kind of, I'm going to use a swirling motion here. You can use a swirling too. You kind of have to find what works for you. But I'm going to swirl these together and the swirling pulls my light into the dark, pulls my dark into the light. So I'm pulling those colors into each other and it kind of gives me this little, you know, medium ground here where they meet up. I'm just going to go all the way along. And of course, I'll want to open the, this drawer and get around my drawer edges. And then this is just my rough draft coat. So I, I'm not expecting, I still have a, a few spots here. I can see my um, wood peeking through on. And that's okay because by the, I, I have to come back and do a second coat. I'm going to repeat the same exact process for a second coat. And that's when I'm going to get rid of any spots that are peeking through. I like this color combination. I think this is going to be really pretty. It's going to be a little bit of a warm kind of brown tone. So I just kind of, I gave myself kind of a line there. Swirl it out. Bye-bye. And then I kind of come and soften out those little swirly marks that I created. So now in the situation that you go putting down a base color and it's applying too thin and you find yourself having to do multiple coats. Yeah. This is this will require multiple coats. I'm not going to get through this in one coat at all. Most always, I, re I I don't think I've ever done a piece with just one coat. It's always going to be two. Is that your question? Yeah, we're getting there, but yeah. Oh, keep carrying. No, we're good. Carry on. You got it. But that was it. Okay. You got Yay. it, Toyota. <laughs> uh, I don't yep. think that's the saying at all. It used to be. I dated myself again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle anyone dated you. <laughs> oh man, ain't that the truth? Oh man. <laughs> I didn't realize the door was big enough for you to come in with your bag of jokes. I keep it in the wall with Bob. It's always up. <laughs> That's good because it was empty. Always super handy. All right, I'm just going to get inside this and I'm going to use the pure coffee bean. So this gets a little bit darker still on the edge of my drawer. Still got a little bit of French linen mixed in there. I'm probably getting down to pure coffee bean. Yep, Cindy thinks you're on a roll. <laughs> yeah. I don't find it funny. <laughs> Me and Cindy get along just fine. I think you just need to sit there and paint. <laughs> Alright, so I'm kind of kind of got my little outline there and then I'm going to come back and let's do the second drawer. I try to keep my coat, my brushes dedicated to one color. <laughs> the French linen and the drop cloth started to look kind of alike. In the light, I can tell the difference. And I'm going to repeat the same process three times down the front of this drawer, and then we'll turn it, or we'll turn it and do the side of the piece too. Sides are intimidating because they're those big, wide open spaces, and so you kind of have to get everything a little bit cleaner looking. See? Wow. Somebody caught me on the Toyota ad. That's right. We got one person. <laughs> oh, that poor stool. Yeah. <laughs> I got the WD-40 bus. But my stool's a little squeaky, too. Like, See, actually... If I comment on that, then I get in trouble. That's yeah, not you fair. Do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Uh, it actually annoys me a lot when I'm out here painting by myself and all I hear is I'm trying to get in the zone. All right, this is this one's a little bit wider, so I get a little bit more room to work with, which I actually prefer. I don't like those narrow spaces. It can be a little bit more natural looking when you've got a little bit of a wider space. Oh, look at that. You and Bob match. Do we? Pretty close. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh good. Yeah. Okay, he got the memo this morning. I was, I was wondering if he would check his email. I got a little shadow from the light. It's playing with my mind. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is, I, I mean, this top drawer is far from perfect, but I need to get my colors laid on so that I can fix this up. In, it, in my second coat. And then my coffee bean is just going to go around the edges and be kind of that dark. I like this color combo though. Oh, 
clear with color combos. And I don't worry about if I get French linen on my brush and I'm painting right out of my container. The contamination is so minimal. I don't even like the word contamination. I'm mixing the colors anyway, so. Um, you can pour your paint into a separate container though if you prefer, but it's so minimal. I actually, I, I don't use very much paint. I actually use a lot of more dry brushing. That's a pretty corner right there. And then I'm just gonna darken it up a little bit. Let's do the same over here. What color is she throwing on there? So this is drop cloth, French linen, coffee bean. Oh man, <laughs> what size is that, Brittany? Brittany uh, just mentioned you are on her TV now. Oh, oh yeah. Bring in the paint. You guys, it's really hard to watch yourself on camera. It's really hard. Let alone when it's a 70 inch TV. So I never want to know that. There's been a couple times when we've cast it, you know, watching, rewatching a live and cast it onto the living room TV. It makes me want to cringe. What if I go into like a TV store, like a Best Buy, and I request, you know, and they got like the wall of oh, TVs? You should just change and I'm like, all, yeah, I just change it over to brush you my granny. You don't request anything. You just go in there and you do. You oh, just right. do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brittany says 65 inches. That's right. <laughs> So pretty. I think up here I'm just going to do just the coffee bean itself. Keep this little lip under here nice and dark. And then when it wraps onto the top, my outer edge will be coffee bean as well. So it'll make sense. The coffee bean kind of looks like the dark wood, but but it's a it's cooler. Like hip and trendy. It's not like a a brown like a dated brown you know like pine cone sorry pine cone watch let's look at pine cone yeah just to take it a step back we're not doing silk this is no, just regular this is the chalk mineral yeah. paint pine cone <gasps> sorry pine cone let's compare pine cone to coffee bean see it has more orangey tones in it that's why I, that's why i don't vibe with it it's too orangey it does great though for painting faux wood finishes because it's the color of wood. It's the color of Bob's hair. I actually like, uh, I like coffee bean for faux wood finishes too a lot though. You can use coffee bean as a stain over, um, if you want a dark stain, you can use it over raw wood and you just do a wash. So a color wash means you dilute the paint and add a thin layer over raw wood. And it ends up looking like a dark wood stain. It's very pretty, but you can still see your wood grain through the thinned out paint. So coffee beans really versatile. It's also great for shading. It's very shady. Uh, this little spot right here where I had my wood peeking through. Um, watch if I brush it, it's going to stay lighter than the rest of my piece because because I've got that wood. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of extra paint so that it'll be easier to cover on my next coat. I'm going to darken this up a little bit too. Got a little grayed out from my French linen. I'm going to keep those a little bit darker. Pretty. Goodness. <laughs> you said she's different. on the treadmill watching on her big screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry says she needs coffee bean in her life. I just need you coffee do. in my life. Coffee made from coffee beans. Yeah, coffee beans awesome. Uh, coffee bean wasn't in the Dixie Bell line when I first got started. Speaking, speaking of things that weren't in the Dixie Bell line, did you guys know that there's stuff not in the Dixie Bell line right now that will be in the Dixie Bell line? Say, like when I tell you about them tomorrow. What? Huh? Yeah, I know that was a really confusing coded message, huh? What I'm trying to tell you guys is that, coded? is that there are new products coming out and we get to show them to you tomorrow. What? So tomorrow is going to be a big day for our Dixie Bell family. And we get to tell you guys about some stuff we've been working on for the last what several is tomorrow? months. Tomorrow on is Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Fri Friday. All right, gave myself. This looks terrible, you guys. This is a terrible, terrible looking coat. 
This is my rough draft. This all gets fixed in our second round, right? I oh, will... Nita, we get along very well. She's got a lot of energy. She, she's on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will do a full video on this finish too, you guys, so that when uh, when these are done, you can see the full start to finish with first and second coat. I'll do it on that other nightstand. And that those go up on my YouTube channel. So you get a full start to finish. You can watch the entire process, including our scuff sanding and everything we did tonight. And then you can watch the entire finish all the way through. This actually, this set actually has a bed and a full size dresser that are going to match. Too. Oh, I got a question for you. Can you give us a hint? What's uh, coming up tomorrow? Or I does it rhyme can't... with nope? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't know. How should we play this game? I want to give you guys all the hints. I just want to show you, honestly, but I can't. I'm sworn to secrecy by my team. I'm being a team player right now, guys. I'm going to swirly this together. I like the technical jargon. Swirly? Yeah. Swirly, swirly. I like the swirl because it pulls the paint colors into each other, and then all I do is I get rid of the swirl. Swirl. Get rid of it. So it lets me soften up those lines in between my colors and then I just brush it, brush it out. You can also get some really moody. If you don't brush it out, you can get some, man, this. Oh, well, you really want to get all the points. I know, you? it's super hard for me to reach over here. And I hate, hate when you guys have to look at the back of my head because I lean in front of the camera, but. Um. Oh, hints. Do you guys have guesses? Oh my God. Well, of course. There's more colors. <laughs> there's molds. There's oh, transfers. Like, you name it, right? Like, ooh. we're throwing it out there. I know. Keep them coming. Um, something is, some of those things are correct. It's more. Yeah, like Wendy says, let's do a rhymes with. <laughs> a <Okay. laughs> rhymes with. Nope. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, it's, oh, Ronnie it's, knows a few things. Oh, Ronnie, does know, know, Ronnie things. does know a few things. I'll give you that, Ronnie. Ronnie, no peak, no talking, Ronnie. Uh, it is more than one thing. How about that? How about that, you guys? It's, oh. more, it's more than one thing. So whatever it is, we just put an S on the end of the word. <laughs> well, nice. no, I don't mean it's all the same thing. <laughs> I mean, it's more than, there's more than one correct answer. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh, I like these tests. Yeah. I would have done really well in school. <laughs> yeah, but it's a multiple You just choice. can't have a wrong answer. It's, Sweet. It's a choose your own adventure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a few. There's a few surprises. Um, tomorrow, if you guys follow my pages, you guys are going to get to see. And it's exciting. I have a full video. That will go up on my YouTube channel at midnight Eastern Standard Time. How about that? I know. You guys are not going to get it out of me because Dixieville will fire me. I will have to find a new job. And I'm not qualified to do much of anything but paint <laughs> stuff. This is not true. <laughs> you could be my secretary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I'm getting down here and then we're gonna turn this and we'll get onto the side. If Dixieville wasn't on, maybe I would tell you. So if you guys can kick oh, them off. Oh, look at that. Deb says, I'm up that late. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. It's already filmed, Deb. I just have to upload it. So midnight tonight, brush, brush by Brandy on YouTube. Now, midnight tonight, Pacific Standard Time? Eastern. We're going Eastern because they get midnight before we do here. What? Yeah, so. They're just like more. I mean, that's where you that's where you want to be. That's where the party's gonna be at. So I got this guy right here. Can you see where it's going? These are gonna be nice and dark. Yeah, it's going to someone's house. And I'll fade in to a light in the center. It looks like a hot mess right now. Very much a rough draft. There's always an ugly phase. That's um oh. <laughs> Again, it's like the seat thing. I can't say anything. I will just, just get in trouble. Did you just fuck there up is up what to high school? Well, you did live through my ugly what? face. All right, let's turn this. 
Don't fall, Bob. I'll feel guilty. <laughs> Don't know. Balance. Sean's, Balance. Sean's Dixie Bell's next ambassador. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I tried. They, no, no. Uh, they politely declined. <laughs> it never even got say. there. Yeah, they politely declined on that one. There have been a couple times I'm like, I'll let Sean go on live for me. And they're like, well, why don't we just oh. cancel that? Oh, do you know another Sean? Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. <sighs> All right. This time I'm kind of continuing my coffee bean. And then I'll get in there with my um, French linen. So these edges are all going to be the coffee bean. Yeah, see, it'd be all wrong. This is a painting channel. I don't belong. <laughs> what would you have to have, be? You have to have talent. <laughs> my, <laughs> All right. Might be just dead air. So I'm going to frame this this bottom section out right here. Let's kind of work on that. I again, if whatever you start with, the whatever color you start with when you're blending tends to be what you're heavy on. And so I usually try to start with the color that I want to be dominant. You just end up being heavier at first. That's me anyways. There may be people that are opposite that the color they end with is what they're heavy on. So my rough framework looks a little bit like this. Looks a little bit crime scene-ish. It gets better. <laughs> FBJ. Do I have to explain this one? What? No? Fireball June, oh. the acronym. What kind of coffee do I drink? Uh, any, any kind. The kind yeah. that's in the coffee pot. Look, I have three <laughs> kids. I don't, Look. yeah. Drinking it just slows it down. <laughs> yeah. If we could just get it intravenously, it yeah. would be faster. You know what Let's... stinks though, is Sean makes coffee every day and it smells so good and I cannot drink coffee. I can't handle it. Um, it wigs me out for a good 48 hours. I'm not kidding you. I'm just hypersensitive to caffeine. And so I'm so jealous. Every morning I sit here like this, watching Sean with his coffee cup. Here, let's get this. Like wishing I could have some and I can't touch it. Every once in a Thanks while, for making I'll, me feel like Scrooge. I'll, I'll break and I'm like, hey, let me get some of that coffee. And I get like a thimble and I'm like, <gasps> no, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> and it warms my soul. <laughs> and then I only wig out for like six or and seven hours. And then I just hours. put you back in the closet. Yeah, and which the is, I, you know, wigging out for six or seven hours, that's much more normal for me. This is going to be pretty. So I just brushed myself a little bit of the drop cloth in the center. I'm going to lighten that up. Now, notice I go vertical and <laughs> I go horizontal. Oh. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. It's just not the same. It's like. You don't drink it for the taste. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a beer drinker, but it would be like non alcoholic beer. Like. Oh, it's not just, the same. Just, just don't, a shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to drink to know that that is not the same. Amateur hour. And then I would feather this out with my brush. That is a really pretty blend right there. That's going to be really pretty. But I think it helps to go vertical and horizontal and just brush those two colors together and then soften out all these edges. to an, I like a nice, fat, softened space. Like this full spot right here is all where they blend together. I like it to be nice and thick because otherwise it looks like a stripe. I'm I'm overworking this for a first coat, but it's because I really like this. That's pretty good. And then I'll do another coat and it'll be even better, in theory. All right, and then so I just did this one section. Now I'm going to come focus on out here, this outer ring, this rings of Saturn out here. Oh, speaking of which, we had our oh, landing man. on Mars today. Here we go. I know. If this was the Brush by Brandy <clears throat> News channel, we'd be talking about that. I went into Sean's, uh, Sean's office today and played him a couple of the <laughs> a couple of the live sounds we're going to get back from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind it's, like a scratch it sounds record. like white noise radio static so we got a little sneak peek of that and then i'm just going to brush a little bit of my french linen out into this to soften it up again keeping that that line where they meet up i want it nice and wide that is a stripe nope can't do it 
I don't know. Personally, I don't, I mean, I get like this techie stuff, but I don't really understand being so excited about Mars. I just don't. Are we go? I mean, I don't know. I guess eventually way past my lifetime is when it's going to be relevant. All right. It's a little stormy looking because this is my first coat. So I've got like my wood peaks through a little bit there, a little bit there. It's going to take me two coats and then I'll come back and soften these all out swirly brush it out swirly brush it out but even if i left it this kind of stormy moody look here is actually really pretty and i do like like if you come in here and swirl these colors together i i do like to leave the swirls in it sometimes they're really pretty it's just a more moody look It, it, it looks it looks kind of stormy like clouds a little bit but that swirling brush stroke if you struggle with blending can really help it's just a different kind of a look so if i wanted to clean those out and soften it up then i just come back and brush out the swirls but you can leave them in and they're really pretty too you know how you move your brush Swirls, cross hatching, all those different movements give different texture to the paint. Let's come do this spot up here too. So as far as not using water while you're doing your blending? Um, Cause right now I don't wanna, when I do my second coat, I'll use more water than I do here. <clears throat> um, if I use water, it's gonna thin the paint out a little bit. And I'm not gonna get the coverage. Right now I'm trying to cover my wood more than anything. This is the rough draft coat. Okay, I, I'm getting my colors laid out. I would make any decisions here if I didn't want, if I didn't like these colors, if I wanted to change out the coffee bean for gravel road, I would do it at this phase. This is when I would experiment a little bit. You know, do I want this to all be one blend instead of doing this section and this? Play with the different ideas on this coat because I'm gonna perfect this all in my second coat. The reason I use water in the second coat is because I've got most of my coverage from this. I just need the second coat to kind of perfect it, soften everything out a little bit. That's when I'll use water. But right now I want the coverage over this dark wood. I don't want to thin this, thin this paint out. Pretty. I don't sing like Malia does. Malia's our singer. Oh, I mean, if you want me to kick it in, just let me know. Yeah, la, 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 la. <laughs> We have my middle son out here with us right now. He's my artist. Huh? No? And you are changing brushes. Yes, I have. So let me show you what I've got going on right now. This is, what I've, this is what I've used so far. One for each color to lay the colors on. And then I've got one neutral brush to blend it out with. If this starts getting muddy, <laughs> I try to clean and wipe it off, but if it starts getting too muddy, I'll pull in another one. So I do bring usually an extra brush out, but that's what I've got right now. A total of four brushes. Not too bad. Um, so we have a, a actual request. At Malia, would it be better if you actually grabbed a song and told her she had to Is sing Malia on her email? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, Malia's way more talented and attractive and all that stuff. We love her. And hate her at the same time. What? Why are you guys telling secrets? Oh, Firewall June just said, hi, Ashton. Oh. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm going to be a little busy tonight. How many more brushes are you throwing in here? <laughs> Sean has not washed my brushes out in quite some time, actually. I would like to say that. I just that. did it the other night. It doesn't count. You did a poor job. I had to redo it. Just kidding, you didn't, I don't know. I just ordered a new brush cleaner. I'm pretty excited to try it. That should be coming soon. What's his name? <laughs> Fabio. Oh, then you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're he's, totally He's cool. gonna be just he's fine. Like, yeah. I don't really care how he cleans a brush. Super rough dropped on this side here. But I really like the transformation of the coffee bean. I wasn't sure if it would be too brown, but I feel like it's just the right color. Um, I might even 
lighten it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, I can't oh, focus. Man. Your water is going to go. Is it? Never mind, Bob. Not like he needs a seatbelt or anything. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side too. I think this is really pretty. I like this, this right here. Um, I'm going to do the other side in the top and then I will repeat this exact same process over the whole thing. Um, like I said, I'm going to do this other one on camera. So by the time this is done and um, there will be a full tutorial on this finish, start to finish on my YouTube channel. See, there we go, Lola. It's a balmy minus four in South Dakota. <laughs> yeah, we have friends that, oh no, no, they're in North Dakota. I suppose it's probably not far off though. I don't, I can't do it. I don't understand. I think it is pretty close to South Dakota. Oh, is it? No, never mind. That's what I was just talking about. Your joke is not funny at all. <laughs> You're geographically incorrect. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to pop off. Thank you guys so much. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow at midnight tonight, I'll put a video up on my YouTube channel. Tomorrow, you guys are going to see some amazing things from the Dixie Bell team. So if you're not already, you guys go join the Chalk Mineral Enthusiasts uh, group and um, World of Chalk Paint. Those are two of the Dixie Bell groups, and they're going to be full of tons of fun stuff tomorrow. New stuff. Right? Are you excited? Did I build some excitement tonight? Tomorrow. Um. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. Happy Thursday. Um, if you don't already, go follow Brush by Brandy on YouTube. Um, I will be back next Thursday. and We will do something else to, um, together. If you guys want um, to check out any of the products we used tonight, which are Drop Cloth, French Linen, and Coffee Bean, I put my link above in the post. You can also find a retailer there. If you want to go um, shop your local retailer, you can find those on the website as well. Man, that is a must-have. So, midnight? Midnight, YouTube, be there, be there. I promise it'll be worth it. It'll be worth staying up. All right, you guys have a good weekend. I'll talk to you guys next week.